In this video, we will do an exam review of the hypertonia caused by upper motor neuron lesions. We'll discuss different types of hypertonia and compare spasticity and rigidity. Few important exam questions before we start the topic. Question number one, what's the difference between rigidity and spasticity? Number two, which muscles are involved in ankle clonus and patellar clonus? And number three, what's positive Babinski and what's negative Babinski sign? Let's discuss hypertonia. Hypertonia occurs in upper motor neuron lesions may be due to pyramidal tract lesions hypertonia or may be extra pyramidal tract lesion hypertonia pyramidal tract lesion hypertonia include clasp knife and ankle clonus and the extra pyramidal type include cogwheel rigidity and the lead pipe rigidity so what's tone tone is the resistance of a muscle to passive stretch. There are two types of tone, spasticity and rigidity. We'll discuss this topic later. First, few general points about the hypertonia and their reason. Number one, in upper motor neuron lesions, increased motor neuron discharges occur to both agonist and antagonist muscles. Number two, alpha and gamma motor neuron activity is controlled by the descending corticospinal tract that includes pyramidal and extrapyramidal tract. The extrapyramidal tract also includes the fibers from the cerebellum, basal ganglia and the brain stem. Number three, alpha motor neuron activity is controlled more by pyramidal tracts. They innervate the extrafusal fibers as we already discussed in the other video and stimulation of which causes muscle contraction. Gamma motor neuron activity is controlled more by extrapyramidal tract. They innervate the intrafusal fibers and their stimulation causes a stretch reflex. So these are the alpha motor neurons and these are the gamma motor neurons. The alpha motor neuron innervating the extrafusal fibers and the gamma motor neurons innervating the intrafusal fibers. Their activity is unchecked when there is a lesion of the upper motor neurons, pyramidal and extrapyramidal tract. Stimulation of the gamma motor neuron causes shortening of the intrafusal fibers and stimulate the extrafusal fibers to cause rigidity. Number five, pyramidal tract lesion causes more flexion deformities in the upper limb because they affect more anti-gravity muscles in in patients who suffer from stroke, whereas increased gamma motor neuron activity in extrapyramidal neuron lesion causes hypertonia and hyperreflexia. And number six, in pyramidal tract lesion, the Babinski sign is positive, and in extrapyramidal tract lesions, Babinski is negative. As I already explained, tone is the resistance of a muscle to passive stretch. Two types of hypertonia are spasticity and rigidity. So, what's spasticity and what's rigidity? Spasticity occurs in upper motor neuron lesions, pyramidal tract lesion, and is due to number one, increased activity of alpha motor neurons which are unchecked due to lesions of the upper motor neuron lesion. Number two, it's velocity dependent. Number three, spasticity is more in anti-gravity muscles, upper limb flexors and the lower limb extensors. And number four, in spasticity, there is sudden release after reaching maximum. Now rigidity. Rigidity occurs in extrapyramidal lesions. Number one, it's due to increased activity of the gamma motor neurons. Number two, it's not velocity dependent. Number three, it's present throughout the range of the movement. And number four, rigidity occur equal in both agonist and antagonist muscle, in both flexors and extensors. They are both rigid at the same time. Now let's discuss the pyramidal tract lesion, hypertonia, which include clasp knife and ankle clonus. Number one, clasp knife rigidity. When muscles are hypertonic, continuous passive flexion causes increase in resistance due to stretching of the extensor muscles. However, when passive flexion is continued as an elbow joint and sufficient force is applied, limb resistance suddenly decreases. Why? Because further stretching 
of the tricep muscle activates an inverse stretch reflex that relaxes the muscle. So it's the inverse stretch reflex that causes muscle relaxation in hypertonia and clasp knife rigidity. The clasp knife rigidity is lengthening reaction where resistance decreases due to lengthening of the muscle in passive flexion. Moderate stretch causes muscle contraction and strong stretch causes muscle relaxation due to activation of inverse stretch reflex. The second increase in tone is ankle clonus. When muscles are hypertonic, sudden maintained dorsiflexion of the foot by the examiner causes rhythmic plantar flexion of the ankle. This is known as ankle clonus. It's a series of involuntary rhythmic contractions and relaxations of which muscles? Of the gastronemius muscle. Due to what? Due to stretch reflex inverse stretch reflex consequence. In a stretch reflex inverse stretch reflex when discharges are increased the intrafusal fibers are shorter than the extrafusal fibers. So a stretch increases the rate of discharges of the alpha motor neuron. Increased gamma activity initiate inverse stretch reflex. Ankle cronus may be caused by interruption of the upper neuron fibers. For example, it may occur in a stroke, multiple sclerosis, hepatic failure or serotonin syndrome. A patellar clonus is due to contraction of the quadricep muscle. So ankle clonus due to contraction and relaxation of the gastronemius muscle and patellar clonus due to rhythmic contraction relaxation of the quadricep muscle. Now, these two were caused by the pyramidal tract lesion. Extra pyramidal tract lesion produce two types of rigidity during the passive movement. Number one is cogwheel rigidity. In cogwheel rigidity, there is intermittent increase in the tone in passive movement. When muscles are hypertonic, continuous passive flexion causes start and stop movements throughout the range of motion of a joint as an elbow. So trying extending the joint loses the resistance and relax and then resistance begin again. So stop and start again. Second extrapyramidal neuron lesion rigidity is lead pipe rigidity. In lead pipe rigidity, there is uniform increase in tone in passive movement of the joints in both agonist and antagonist muscles. For example, flexor and extensor, both are rigid so that it gives a uniform increase in tone that is known as lead pipe rigidity. Passive movement of an extremity causes plastic feeling resistance. Lead pipe rigidity affects neck, arm, leg. Rigidity in the back can lead to a stooped appearance and the patient complains of difficulty in turning in bed and arising from the chair. Now answers to the question, what's the difference between rigidity and spasticity? Tone is the resistance of a muscle to passive stretch. Two types of increased tones, spasticity and rigidity. Briefly here, I repeat, spasticity occurs in upper motor neuron lesions, pyramidal tract lesion, and is due to increased activity of the alpha motor neurons, which are unchecked. Number two, it's velocity dependent. And number three, it's more in anti-gravity muscles, upper limb flexors and lower limb extensor, and it's sudden release and there is a sudden release after reaching a maximum in spasticity. Whereas rigidity occurs in extra pyramidal lesions, there is increased activity of the gamma motor neuron which causes stretch reflex increase and it's not velocity dependent and rigidity is present throughout the range of movements and affects both agonist and antagonist muscles, flexors and extensors equally. Question number two, which muscles are involved in ankle clonus and patellar clonus? Ankle clonus is a series of involuntary rhythmic contractions and relaxations of the gastronemius muscle whereas patellar clonus is due to contraction and relaxations of the quadriceps muscles. Question number three, what's positive Babinski sign and what's negative? Normal Babinski is flexion of the toes when sole of the foot is scratched from heel towards the big toe. This is also negative Babinski. So normal Babinski and negative Babinski are same. Positive Babinski is when the sole of the foot is scratched, there is fanning of the toes and extension of the big toe instead of normal flexor response.